All right. It's been a whole fucking week. Let's see, trying to remember where we left off. Yeah, finished everything related to the mansion incident except the the second Wesker scenario right here. Right, we need to do that. And as mentioned before, hopefully I will not be ragging on this game too much more just because I spent the past week going deep in on a, f a fucking terrific light gun game. Yeah. Albert wears sunglasses inside like a douchebag Wesker. The one and only. Yeah, let's just fucking get on with it. Oh, man. Like, I've, I've been in such I a fucking light once. gun mood. I will never forget the cold, dark fingers of death reaching out for me. However, even that death was a necessary component of the big picture. Fuck you, that was not part of your plan. Brought me back from the brink of annihilation. When I awoke, hatred became my master. Emergency. Fucking Christ. Found the Still the dumbest the fucking and the change they had to make to this. this like, this is Kojima levels of, like, to retcon to make the, make it I make something, something seem so planned when it wasn't necessary. Come the fuck Time on, game. The data and get out. Due to the emergency condition, all data has been backed up. Wesker D-shit. <laughs> he gets them back. Sergei was busy. He, he gets them back in time for Code Ver Wait, did he have them in Code Veronica? Oh yeah, he did, I think. Though he did have some times where like he was, he had the shades on, sometimes off. Impossible. Who are you? I am Red Queen. My oh, objective fucking hell. is the management and protection of Umbrella assets. My secondary mission objective you will regret is the protection this, my lady. of Umbrella that officer. That, I lives. promise. I guess, I mean, like, well, no, I actually remembered the end of... Except when Chris destroys them in the volcano in 5. Well, well, he, well, he explicitly, like... Throws them off. To take the virus for a test drive. Oh my god, what the hell? Not bad at all. Oh, fucking hell. Even with all with you all super powered up with a virus, you still do not uh, you still not play any differently. This is still a fucking light gun shooter through and through. A very... A very slow one. God, for real. And it's like... Literally, the more I've thought about it, because I've been going back through, like, either playing a bunch of light gun games, or... Or, like, watching, like, full playthroughs on YouTube of ones that, like, I don't have the means to, like... Properly play authentically or anything like that. It's like... Literally, the closest analog this game has to another light gun shooter is House of the Dead 4, I realized. And that game is, like, not only significantly faster than any of these scenarios, it is also a... It is also, like, a much fast, uh, like, much faster game. It has, like, higher enemy counts. All sorts of shit. At least it's not typing of the dead. I mean, typing of the dead is fun, but like that's different. Yeah, kick that chimera. Oh my god. <laughs> what amazing power.
Oh my god. Yeah, I'm getting controls mixed up and all this shit. Just trying to like go like, okay, how do I select weapons again? This is quite enjoyable. See, I would be in line with what Wesker's thinking if it felt like I had more that like if I actually had Wesker specific abilities or like features that was reflected in gameplay. Because as it stands, that doesn't that's not really the case here. Like, I'm still using the exact same weapon types and abilities that everyone already uses. Aim for the fucking head. There we go, Jesus. Huh. Fucking... Oh my god. This is like the worst thing they could have done to like try and... Like incentivize you to use your... Uh, your fucking like control stick to like adjust the camera slightly you, like you saw that shit you fucking saw I was like s like the head where like it's the actual weak point is is like kind of in the edge the top edge of the screen oh my god well at least he has that still he has the fucking palm thrust It'd be nice if it could. I don't know. Okay, that was actual horse shit right there. You saw that. Chris, Jill, I hope you survive long enough for us to have our tear-filled reunion. Seriously, like, why does the camera have to be so angled down? Like, ugh. You know, I'm gonna say it straight up. Like, like if there's, like, a for real serious uh, problem that, like, that should not exist, like, in these light gun games, like, regardless of how good of an idea you think it is, it is not a good idea to give you any semblance of camera control in a fucking light gun shooter. The whole point is that you don't need to worry about, like, having, like, constant control of that. Even if it's to a limited degree. Like you see with, uh, uh, uh where, like, it only pushes the stick in a direction. I thought we disposed of you. Like, to a certain, uh, to a certain degree. Nobody's perfect. Not even you, Lisa. Dead Space Extraction? I've not played it. The most, uh, the most I can, like, give it props to is that, like, I like the detail of how just, you know, you tilt the Wii Remote on its side and you, and that's how you access, like, the vertical orientation for the plasma cutter. But otherwise, it's like... I, I just do not prefer... I, I like I'm just not fond of light gun shooters when they are not directly in the context of they are designed for arcade experiences like wh like when it's a genre where like your primary interactions are design are by design extremely simple more simple than it is for like first person shooters because even in those you do have the element of like movement and camera control in in conjunction with firing a gun. All the weapons from Dead Space uh, 1. Okay. That's neat. Yeah, but it's like, it's just... I don't know. Even if there's some, like, interesting stuff with it, like, I'm not in, really in a hurry to check it out because I just know that it's probably going to be, like, in a similar situation of being a bit too long and not as, like, fast-paced as I, as I find the genre to be, like, at its best with. Because I've been playing a shit ton of Ghost Squad this past week. 
Not a single playthrough of that game ever extends past half an hour. And that's just on, like, raw gameplay, not even counting all, like, the, the cutscenes that, that show up, which are already pretty short. And I think part of that is because of, like, them trying to also, like, include, like, various uh, console game-isms with the whole proceeding. Like, like with this game, where, like, you have, like, the fucking collectibles. And, like, if you break open, you know, objects in the environment where you have, and there are, and you have umbrella files you could pick up. With how long this stuff goes on for, it's, like... It feels like it, it that makes like kind of the act of like if you're trying to go for those runs where you're collecting everything it makes the idea of like accidentally missing those even more frustrating because at least when it comes to like getting a like a hidden medal in ghost squad that's different because of just how fast the game goes anyway and you're likely to get another anyway not to mention that you know they exist for like score bonuses I would really like if you could just fucking stagger, you bitch. God damn it. It's like, what is... Uh, and, like, at this point, literally, what point is there for me to, like, use a handgun to save bullets on other weapons? I'll take that. Considering Lisa Trevor survives everything you throw at her in two RE games, you want to bet she actually survived the mansion explosion? I'm going to say yes, considering it's like, even though I felt, you know, Nemesis was already pretty dead as could be in, in RE3 after getting a railgun shot followed by several magnum bullets to the dome. Getting completely atomized by uh, by an explosion, nuclear or otherwise, I think is a pretty surefire way to guarantee that something that should be dead is going to stay dead. <laughs> like, like, th like that. That's my take on it. I feel pretty confident that's the case. Survive the, uh, the railgun shot? Bullshit. Ah, well. I guess so. I don't know. It, I, I guess that just comes off more weird to me, considering how often you have to fight or run from him throughout that entire game. And that, in gameplay terms, that is you actually, like, defeating him... Uh, like for real, you know, like in gameplay terms as a boss The tyrant body died, but the parasite dad, okay, you know what make uh, making that distinction I can actually buy that you know L Like yeah, if like if if the railgun and magnums were like enough to like render like his physical shell basically like no longer operable, or that it could be reasonably regenerated, or, or anything like that, then yeah, I can totally believe that, like, the parasite inside was still, was still kicking, and that the nuke would have done that in. Because it's like, like, that even reminds me how it's like, you know how in, you know how in Dead Space, you know, getting back to that, since we did bring up Extraction, is that, uh, uh, there we go. Finally, on to the next phase. Is how, like, you know, in gameplay terms, necromorphs are basically dealt with and dead once you have, like, severed enough of their limbs. But the whole thing about how necromorphs work is that, like, in lore terms, that's not really killing them. You're, you're just rendering them, like, so inoperable that they are never going to be able to, like, do anything at that point.
God, how am I still alive after that? Please give me a fuck. Give me an herb, for fuck's sake, please. Yep, cannot kill a necromorph, but render it combat ineffective. Absolutely the case. Fuck off! Fucking crimson heads. And I have to... Do that checkpoint again. Because there's no fucking first aid spray. God. Hi, Kyo. <sighs> Man, yeah, you know what's funny? I gotta go back to like House of the Dead four comparisons with this because that just also brings up another thing that, funny enough, also like correlates with uh. Something uh, that, like, older RE games have been a lot better about that, like, I absolutely hated about the remake of 4. Is that the thing I like best about uh, when I play House of the Dead 4 is that when a zombie or, like, any enemy is gearing up to hit you, as long as you're shooting it, especially in the clearly defined weak point, uh, points, you're always guaranteed to stagger it, like, on the first hit. I mean, not counting any of like no, the the big heavy enemies, you know, like that. Like that's kind of different. And here it's just more like, motherfucker, I am putting three shots in your head, and you are and you are still going through with your attack. I'm calling shenanigans on you. Yeah, see, like that. And I guess part of the incentive is that they're trying to like, like get you to use other weapons to make that easier. I don't know, it's just a dumb mess. Seriously, how the fuck? Same, same spot again. All the extra faces she's wearing to act as armor. Problem's not even anything that I'd say is like, specific to like what Lisa's got right now. This is literally every enemy. At least when I'm dealing with hordes of zombies in fucking House of the Dead 4, like, kind of no matter, like, who it is that's coming at me, like, uh, like, aiming for the head, which is, like, a, which is, like, a reasonably sized hitbox that has consistency behind it. Again, all this really shows that you gotta do a light gun shooter. You need to like have like a keen fucking understanding of everything regarding how they work in uh, like in an arcade sense. She appears to be stalking me. Your desire for eternal slumber shall be granted. Bullshit! I uh. at least I got. Oh fuck you, bitch! There. Oh wait, no, that's probably like... Oh my god, yeah, she is actually regenerating the entire time. Seriously, fuck you, asshole! God damn! Come. Uh. Be a good girl and stay dead this time. Jeez. And that's how Wesker got out of the Spencer Mansion. And so I was reborn like a phoenix emerging from the flame. 
I no longer finishing with I even more I'm still convinced that this is Shinkiro art I had risen beyond the human race and cheated it really uh, spe especially with how that face even looks Kyo, you're still in here you can like confirm that absolutely looks like all that and like all these other like end art screens for these scenarios are straight up like they got Shinkiro to do the to do the art for it. Oh, well. But that's it for that Wesker scenario. And Wesker gets a pose via RPG-7 to the face. He takes two RPG-7s in that, like, in that event. That's the fuck... That's the fucking wild part about it. So I like this combat... Uh, this assault shotgun that I'm just gonna keep sticking with it. As we head on to... As we head on to the Raccoon City incident proper. With Jill and this clear imposter of Carlos. Th that, is, that is not the Carlos I know, damn it. You Remake Carlos was like the most positive aspect about Resident Evil 3 Remake, straight up. Like the original is still better in every Raccoon way, city, except for when it comes to the, the, uh, to how Carlos the looks and sounds. The over the city like a tidal wave, and in its wake left a living hell filled with ungodly creatures. Umbrella, under the guise of helping the hapless no. citizen, sent in their. No, I would not. I would not. I would not call UBC Carlos in Remake Three. Uh, I would not, Carlos. Like, I would do not want him to be as greasy looking as. Trapped. Fucking Luis in in remake four. Fucking Carlos in remake three is like a goddamn sex symbol. Man, imagine how even more badass Jill would be if it's like, like her, uh, like instead of just starting out with one handgun in the original game, like she just had two. Oh my god. <laughs> This is... No! Oh, my God. She was doing so well for herself and she, until she had to get saved by a man. You okay? I'm fine. That's some good shooting. We've got to get out of here. A rescue chopper's on its way. Come with me. I mean, I'm not talking about Greasy in that sense. I'm talking Greasy in the... This dude is probably, like, a sex offender or, or something. Which is, like, the vibe I get every time I look at Louise. In the remake. Like, he... Uh, like, Louise looks like he should be in jail for something. And that's for something besides the fact that... They retconned him into being a former Umbrella researcher. But whatever. Fuck that remake. The less I had to think about that at this point, the better. Ugh. At least we're you back to dealing with zombies. You've got some moves. I'm a member of Stars. Oh fuck! Thanks I forgot to pick up another. Stars. No one. Oh, there it is. So you're pretty elite then. And you are? I'm Carlos, Corporal Carlos Oliveira. I've been using a gun since I was a kid, so you're safe as long as you stick to uh. Well, the be best I can say about Carlos in this is that he doesn't have like the fake ass stereotypical Mexican accent that they try to saddle him with. Jesus fucking Christ. Like, I genuinely wonder at this point, like, what is even the point of me, like, trying to, like, go for, like, these critical shots. If they're always going to be moving in such a way, combined with the frame rate, that I cannot, uh, that I just cannot, uh, get a reliable headshot. Like, you know what's another thing that House of the Dead 4 does that, like, really helps with that? Is that there's a very clear, consistent, like, camera movement that highlights, like, which enemy is going to attack. Because they're always dead center. And it moves subtly enough that they are kept as close to center position as possible. Like, 
practically no situation like you would get in this where it's doing shit to like really obnoxiously like obstruct your ability to get reliable shots for the sake of difficulty. Because it's like I'm already having to use physical effort to hold up a device to point at the screen and shoot. Ugh, fuck. Fuck you! I literally die all the way, like, in the goddamn first part, even before reaching the checkpoint. God. Honestly, I don't even think, like, two-player would really be enough to, like, resolve this particular issue. I think, actually, the bigger issue, more than anything, is, like... Like, your pistol is the only one with infinite ammo, and it is the, like, the weakest shit ever, and it's like, this, this thing is ultimately made to be played with weapons that are, like, upgraded or otherwise just have infinite ammo. You know, like actual, like, gun shooters out there. Oh my god. Yeah, just This this is definitely the the stream today out of this entire playthrough that is going uh, that absolutely highlights more than anything how much of an absolute snob I am for light gun shooters and how I and how I want them. Because the things it does wrong are like so blatant compared to like any game you might have played that was like designed for an arcade cabinet. At least that's kind of better. That frame rate's really shitting itself right now, unfortunately. They've all been killed here too. Huh. <sighs> Man, I want to replay RE3. Going through the uh, going through the scenario is definitely like that. That's the vibe it's giving me. I guess actually the most positive thing I could say about this as far as like, well, I don't know. Maybe it's too soon to say considering this is literally the beginning of the of this game's version of Raccoon City incident. But I would not be surprised that this is ultimately like better than than the than the portrayal in Remake Three. Something's over there. But who knows? Maybe it might it might be the sort of thing where. It might be the sort of thing, actually, where maybe they still, like, remove, like, the clock tower and you don't go through that. So, fuck it. Who knows? I'm pretty sure Nemesis is will at least, like, be more faithful to, like, how he looked in, in like, his different forms late in the game compared to how he just turned into, like, such an even dumber-looking monster throughout Remake 3.
But I guess to talk about like more positive things from like going uh, while we go through this because these levels really do like to take their time and be as plotting as possible. You know, like just kind of leaning on from like what I was uh, talking about of getting back into like a uh, huge light gun mode. I got Techno Parrots installed on my PC, which means I now have a means of like playing. Quite a number of more modern arcade games without having to wish for uh, the the chance to like have an arcade near me that has the particular games I want. The big one for me being is like I finally have a means to uh, like because of it of Techno Parrot I basically am now able to play House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn. So it's like it's that game. Also, can get a chance to replay Time Crisis Five. Can also run House of the Dead Four on there as well. But it's a bit like glitchy in terms of like the technical details. But like, but like playthrough. Uh, but like just gameplay is still spot on. And then what else? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Also, uh, I could just play Outrun Two SP on that thing. Because that got like a, a port to like the Sega Limburg. Okay. Maybe someday. Might try it on a whim, but like I'm, I'm not I'm not particularly going in with that like on, on high expectations. Pretty much like like of these like kind of like made for home console specific like light gun shooters. I really do feel like House of the Dead Overkill is like the best of those. And even then, I'd say it still kind of runs into similar issues that like I've noted like with these type of games when they're not made for like arcade environments with, with like level pacing and, and the like. No end to them. But but also but also the thing with Overkill, like it's saving grace, even if it has those flaws, is that like it is just it is fucking hilarious. It is like the best homage send up to Grindhouse style films that anyone has done, like post Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino doing that Grindhouse double feature. I'd argue the gold standard, as far as like what you should aim for at the minimum, goes even before House of the Dead and like straight up to Virtua Cop. But, but it, but it's been pretty good. Even though, like I, I've also noted that like even when it comes to, to House of the Dead, there's like a noticeable like design shift that those games have had ultimately, even in arcades. Fuck off. Couldn't let me pick up the shotgun, you prick. Take that. Uh. And of course, like, I'm also the one that, like, makes the point of, uh, that the, uh, like, uh, the de, uh, de facto best light gun shooter is Ghost Squad. Bar none. Especially after going through it so in depth to unlock every weapon and costume to go. and like do, uh, doing things like high score runs and the like just like my high opinion of that game wa was like even further solidified by that because here's the thing with Ghost Squad like there are things about it where I've already like noted it as far as my reasons for why I think it's the best just from like a general design standpoint you know like it's like, it's depended, like, 
like three stage approach that like the Virtua Cop games have, you know? And you can do them in any order uh, as you prefer. Like that that part's good, but you also have like the branching paths aspect with like different scenarios in them. The sort of thing that was like the best thing about House of the Dead 1 and 2 that got downplayed significantly as the series progressed. And, and just had, and of course, like, also other features it had to, like, even though it was made for arcades, like, when you played it, it, it wasn't designed to be, like, the way they got money out of you wasn't by, like, putting you into situations where it was obviously, a, where the whole thing just came off as, like, oh, they're, oh, they're just pulling fast ones over you for the sake of, you know, getting your money. Instead, it was, like, no, they let you access like the easiest versions of each level at the start just to give you a taste of what the game has tease you about like additional routes that, that you can go down and from there just be they can be like okay you know you you beat the you beat that mission on that level you unlock the next level above it and it continues you get more weapons and whatnot like it's a product of Sega's like shift in arcade design towards having uh, of like incorporating player progression, you know, like the th the sort of thing that they like pioneered with Virtua Fighter 4, with like with those like magnetic license cards. Oh come on, I for shit. Well, there goes my first aid spray. Or not? What? Okay then, I guess. I guess QTE deaths override your ability to get a revive. That's fucking ridiculous. Oh my god. But yeah, stuff like that is what I was talking about is like what makes Ghost Squad scrape. But the last thing that like really solidified it for me was when I was actually during this past week playing it so much that I was like trying to get the actual best uh, high score that I could. Of which, best high score I got is like in the low 800k range. Like 827 or so. 827k I think like was my best. And in some instances I could have gotten higher had I not uh, fucked up on uh, on like on, on certain segments. But it's because of like that scoring system that it has, it actually manages to also negate, for the most part, a very serious problem that they've also, uh, uh, that like the genre has also kind of had, where it's like, w when you got like a big score chasing element, depending on how you design your systems, you might end up creating a situation where players are encouraged to like drag out scenarios longer than is like expected so you can like milk additional points out of like enemies or objects you know like time crisis is a game where ironically despite having the word time in the title because every fight that starts has a time limit that game also has like a combo system that is based entirely on uh uh like on how many things you hit with bullets in uh like in a specific time. Like, it's literally a bullet combo counter. And even House of the Dead, like, especially in later games like 4 and Scarlet Dawn are kind of not free of that. Mostly in the sense that it's like, it leads to a very rigid design pattern where it's like, you get, like, you get score bonuses for every time you, like, kill enemies, like, in a in a combo, usually by hitting them in their weak points, in which case with zombies it's always heads, is, is the idea. Like that's their weak point, and as long as you keep like killing each enemy in that way, it's like you keep the combo going and, and you still get points for every time your bullets hit any sort of enemy or object, things like that. So you're encouraged to like hit them in the weak point and then continue to dump bullets into them until like their body despawns because it still registers as like so, as like a hitbox. Ghost Squad avoids anything like that because you know like the game's very strict about the about the rule that like enemies can only take three bullets and then they're down. Like any more and they'll just pass through. You know, they die on the first bullet, 
So, uh, so like, in terms of milking for extra hits, you basically have to get them, like, you can only get them for a maximum of two more times. Got it. Leave it to me. But also, even if you do try and go to routes of, like, milking for uh, each enemy, like, with, by shooting them three times, it doesn't, like, at the end of the day, that's not really, like, the, the routes to uh, getting the best score possible. Because, uh, because that game also has, like, targeted score bonuses you can get that even, like, the, the cheapest one, I think, which is, like, Quick Shot, is still worth more than trying to, like, get the maximum amount of points from, like, three-shot kills. And then that's all, uh, not not even before getting into, like, the unique, uh, the fun detail of how it's, like, with uh, certain weapons, they have penetration. And there's a score bonus for shooting multiple enemies with the same bullets because it'll, like, penetrate through them. So you get the situation where every enemy configuration in every level has a different micro strategy associated with it that doesn't, that has, like, next to no overlap with each other, like... It's not a single macro strategy that applies to every enemy. It's like you have to go about shooting your bullets, like, not just at, uh, like, at enemies in, the, in, like, the most optimal order, but even, but even hitting them before they've actually come on screen because they've spawned behind cover and are going to pop out. And then it's like, you know, you get strategies where it's like, you shoot an enemy that's on the move, so you get him in his death animation. You might stagger it again with a second hit, so that it lines up with another enemy that would uh, possibly run into the line of fire, and that's how you get your double penetration. Like, there's so much to, like, consider going through, where it's just like, that, in addition to, like, the general encouragement of speed versus accuracy, requires, like, a play style that is, like, that has so much more, like, finesse and, like, things to, to think about or consider. Whereas with stuff like Time Crisis games and House of the Dead and things like that, it's like, as long as you understand, like, the core fundamental thing about, like, getting score from enemies, you just apply it to literally every enemy regardless of configuration or, or like, room layout, and you're basically set. Hell, even in something like, say, Time Crisis, there are, like, some games where it's, like, during their boss battles, it's actually advantageous to let the timer run out and take, like, some life damage. Because, like, there are just some objects in there where you will, you know, where, like, shooting it will no longer contribute to, like, really damaging the boss, but it's enough to still, it's still enough to, like, give you way more points than you would otherwise if you were to just, like, kill everything quickly. Bullshit, I was shaking. God damn. Oh my god. How much longer does this have to fucking go on, though? I gotta say. Like, I was singing all my goddamn praises about, uh, about fucking Ghost Squad, and this level is still not done. Uh. RE3 was really the first RE game with actual enemy hordes. Kinda. I mean, enemy counts in RE2 was definitely bigger than one. But but they did get slightly bigger in in three. The thing that really made them stand out was just like the like the general speed of RE3 was always so much faster, you know? Like yeah, like, you didn't just move fast. Zombies moved fast as well. And with, like, the kind of numbers that they'd show up in, like, the threat behind them actually would it basically... That basically gave it a huge increase. They're everywhere. We need to bust through. Oh, my God. Fuck you with that. Fuck you as well.
Oh, my God. How to get shotgun, let zombies be down the door, then fight six zombies to the cramped alleyway. Yeah. You gotta let them get real close in some instances. Which is why you have exploding yeah, barrels. Oh my god, that fucking blink and you miss it shotgun. See, look at that. Like, like I was complaining about like the level of like crowds of, of enemies in this compared to like House of the Dead 4, which came out two years before this in arcades, by the way. And it's like, we're finally getting a situation in this scenario where it's like, okay, they're actually throwing a lot of zombies at you now. This is marginally more, more interesting, I'd say. It's making the frame rate just like run so ragged though. Like that, that's the unfortunate part. <laughs> All right, we got a cutscene. We got to get us a boss. Umbrella? Yeah. We came all the way out here to save you civilians. But the mission went bad the minute we landed. Save us? It's Umbrella's fault that all of this happened in the first place. Hey, hey, easy, Chica. I'm just a hired gun. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Don't tell me it's going to be fucking Gravedigger this really? early. Come on. There's no way they do that. Oh fuck, we are actually fighting Gravedigger this early, aren't we? God damn it. It is. You know what? I guess, I guess as far as being faithful to the original, this definitely does have a leg up over the remake. Because Gravedigger was nowhere in that fucking game. Gravedigger's encountered several times, but only uh, twice can you attack it. Yeah, but the fact that, like, we're in a situation in the recreation of RE3 where we are facing Gravedigger first, but not had a single encounter with Nemesis yet. Like, that's the part that's throwing me off. God, just look at that falling debris and how slow it moves. Like, fucking, like, any arcade game that had that concept would, like, have you dead in three seconds if you didn't shoot all that shit. No, scratch that. Make that two. Oh, my God. Okay. This is at least uh, proving manageable enough. Okay. Could really use more shotgun ammo though. I'm just saying. Oh my god. Fuck you. Oh fuck, I just realized what I'd used up. God damn it. Okay, grenade at least did something. Not not the not the ideal amount of damage, but it's but it's all right. I'm close to the end. This is not this is proving to not be a terrible boss fight in this game, and we already had to go through bullshit like the tyrant. The, uh, I could call this a step up from that. Oh fuck! Ah damn, man! Jesus! I had no chance. Piss off! Oh 
Also, you're not the first boss of Virtua Cop 2. What the fuck you think you're doing throwing shit at me like that? Come on. Oh my god. Yeah, just got the... F I'm realizing now, because there are no more weapon pickups, the final... The final stretch of this whole fight is going to be so slow. Oh my god. Can you please just die already? Okay, that mailbox cannot be destroyed for whatever reason, and that post box. Oh. It's getting close though, just a bit further. Finally, Jesus, goddamn Christ. There really is just like nothing to say about that fucking fight because of how absurdly long it goes for. Like, like, for real, like, I'm practically a broken record bringing this up all the goddamn time, but it is absolutely true. Like, the pacing on this is just so goddamn slow. This is, like, this is not the sort of thing that this genre is well-equipped for. Anyway, I guess we'll give Carlos a go this time because I, I definitely got to know at this point what his uh, what his melee counterattack is. Jill's is still the same naturally, even though like she, even though like it's a different outfit. She had a plan for her last escape. I really didn't know Umbrella was behind this. We have to let the world know what happened. Yeah. But first, we have to make it out of here alive. We can go through here to get to the police station. Yeah, this whole plot progression is definitely bizarre and not at all lining up with, uh, uh like with the original game. <laughs> but whatever. World's ugliest inchworm. Here we go. Oh! Let's see that again. Not bad. Maybe we can use an explosion to our advantage. Already way ahead of you, Jill. There we go. This point, we agree that plot progression to UBC for plot suggestion. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, I guess, I guess that's how it is at this point. 
God, this frame rate is really atrocious sometimes. Wait, 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 hold on. You saw that. Like, that second zombie actually reacted to, like, Carlos's, like, melee counter but because of, like, knocking the previous zombie in there, into it. I'm sorry, is that a fluke or, or that's uh, possible? Because if so, then why the fuck has it not been able to happen more times than, uh, than it should? Oh my god, whatever. More grenades. There's no score penalty for, like, wasting all the grenades, so, like, I might as well try and get the best habit I can of, like, yeah, fucking train. just Something's throwing them right. when I really don't, uh, when I really just want to be done sure, with someone's sir. shit. Well, we'll just have to be that much more careful. You say that, but I, I, but I feel like, 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 if that absolutely is the case, then, then those are some shitty hitboxes. <laughs> because I've definitely seen moments where it feels like that, that absolutely should have counted at times. Oh, well, this is neat. <laughs> like, see, even in that situation, like, I know that, like, the first zombie, like, like, wasn't, uh, like, he was close to touching distance, but not really, like, overlapping. Fuck you. Okay, that kind of worked. But it, but even but I but it's still like not that good feeling the way it's implemented, especially when again because I have to be so harsh about it, bringing up House of the Dead by comparison. You do that shit in House of the Dead Four, it pushes back entire crowds. Ugh. You know, I'll, I'll at least give credit with this. Like the, I'm a, I'm appreciating like the, like the general like strength of the flashlight and how it's like contrasted with like anything that's not on screen basically is pitch black. Like that's something that I'm, I'm definitely giving this uh, this particular segment props for, because it feels like even in games, uh, even in other arcade type light gun games where you do have like a flashlight segment, like they don't have like the same level of pitch black darkness that this area does. This I think is actually like pretty interesting. Because you can't run into a situation. This must have been the it's like the second got hit by uh, the last hit of the combo. Okay. But yeah, it's like, like with this at least, you know, it's doing a good job of like kind of deterring me from like trying to really keep track of anything important that isn't directly in the flashlight. Because like there's a part in House of the Dead 2 where uh, like it's one of the latter levels of the game and you do have like a flashlight effect that that goes on but the level is really not at all that dark enough to like make you feel that there's an incentive to like really rely on the flashlight and what you see within its uh uh within its sight because like everything is just uh, else outside of it is just slightly dimmer than how it normally looks in that game
But I appreciate it. it looks like Carlos unfolds his rifle stock exclusively for whacking things with. Yeah, that's a good detail. Man. Fucking Carlos should have, like... Like, if they couldn't find, like, a story reason to bring him back for the campaign of any later games, they certainly should have, like, made him, like, a character that you could, like, play as in, like, the Mercenaries games. And I mostly just think that entirely because of Remake 3. Angry about hitboxes. It's an important thing to be angry about, damn it. This one's not like the others. Must be an umbrella oh good, liquors. Get the feeling Carlos is secretly one of the founding members of the BSAA. That'd be something. But it's like like, I would just appreciate if Remake 3 Carlos, like, could be in a Mercenaries game. Because, like, that shoulder tackle he has is so good. It is such a better defensive option he has in that game compared to Jill's Emergency Dodge. You're not wrong for being angry, but it made a good title. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's good to know. They're weak, and they do not look anywhere... How the fuck? I'm sorry, I thought there was a fucking rule against, like, enemies being able to attack you through fucking environment objects. What the shit? This one's not like the others. Must be an experiment. Honestly, the thing that throws me off about the liquors, why they look weird, is, like... It's like their arms and legs, they're usually like a lot more beefed up, I think, than in other games compared to compared to here, you know? Like the limbs are so gangly, but the claws and feet are still ginormous. It looks wrong. Yeah, 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 Remake 2 Lickers, those things are fucking terrifying. They're buff as shit on top of the fact that they're already really damn powerful. Let's go back. Also, the unique aspect about how Licorice works are, is something that's ultimately diminished. When you put them into a light gun shooter, because the whole thing is that they only react to things and attack based on sound. So, they're, they're, if they're just going to, like, attack you like normal enemies because the entire game is on rails, then I guess, like, like, what is the point of having them in here? I mean, I guess the tongue attack is something, but but that's uh, but that's not really a good excuse, you know? Fuck you, bugs. And Leon comes out to lose compared to Claire when wrangling them because she gets incendiary grenades while well, he needs to be up close to two, three shotgun shells to get done. Well, yeah, like any grenades, uh, uh, in, of uh, like, against liquors, like, that's preferred, but I don't know. At the end of the day, I actually still, I still ultimately way prefer the weapons that Leon gets in general. Because I've never been the fondest of, like, using, like, automatic weapons or, or like, some of the more gimmicky shit. What's that sound? Mostly because I think it's, like, even with Lickers being, like, a pretty serious threat, it's, like, anytime I've gone through Remake 2 as Leon, I'm usually uh, incorporating, like, some sort of trick that just makes it so I do not even need to deal with a liquor in a combat sense, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, he does get the flamethrower, which is good. But also, I'm just thinking more with, like, 
with how often you face zombies in that game and how zombies in Remake 2 are up there as like the most threatening they've ever been in any Resident Evil. A shotgun, I'd say, is ultimately like more valuable against those things than any of, of like the high-powered weapons that Claire has. Like, like Claire, yeah, like grenade launch is great, but for zombies, that still feels like such overkill for me. And of course, with Leon, there's like a handy strat that you get where it's like, if you do a leg shot, if you shoot a zombie in a leg and like get it to trigger like a leg stagger, you go up, uh, aim the shotgun at their head, and it's a guaranteed head pop every time. It's actually really awesome. It's what I used on like on my last playthrough. Helped save so much ammo at the same time. Come on, keep him coming. I'm literally just waving the Wii Remote around like I'm fucking Kermit the Frog at the end of Muppet Treasure Island. Not bad for an amphibian, motherfuckers. Jesus, so much shotgun shells. Why do I need to use anything else at this point? Okay. Yeah, 48 shotgun shells, grenades. I am loaded up. Like, look at that. Game's actually putting me in a scenario where I'm not actively cursing it as much. I, yeah, I, I, like, I was about to like leave that at what it was until I said as much because I realized like there, there, there is gonna be no end to my bitching about what this game does wrong. <laughs> like. Like I, I like I know people that like aren't too big on light gun shooters and are naturally like have been very critical of stuff like the gun survivor series and this because they're huge Resident Evil fans. I think like the one claim I've heard about is like the reason that these fail is because they're too much like light gun games and not enough Resident Evil. But my rebuttal is no, because other light gun games do not make the same mistakes that like these Resident Evil ones do. Like an actual for real arcade light gun shooter that was set in the Resident Evil universe. Made by people that actually understood the genre and what it needs to work in terms of responsiveness and pacing. Would be a billion times better than any of this and a totally fine like spin off to engage with. What make, uh, when the game gives you enough ammo to make you feel powerful and while still feeling threatened, it gets the tone of RE right. Yes. Like, I get the need to obviously have limited ammo for weapons that aren't the pistol. But, uh, but, but, like, it... That, at that point, like, if you're really gonna be saddling me with that kind of, uh, decision, where, like, my core reusable weapon is a dinky pistol, then the least you could do is, like, give me more consistent strategies or, like, 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 ju like, just make it a lot more obvious and consistent out the gate, like, where I need to shoot and how many bullets it's going to take to, like, interrupt an enemy's attack animation. Because that's a rule that fucking House of the Dead games, as I brought up plenty of times, manages to do a good job of adhering to. And here, it's more like the most sensible place you would think to shoot them doesn't stagger them. And even when you do manage, uh, are shooting in the part of the body where it does actually contribute to a stun, it doesn't feel like it's as simple as like you got the one shot in the right area and then it worked. There's obviously, yeah, there's obviously supposed to be some amount of strategy as far as, like, when is the right time to, uh... All right, I'll hurry up. ...in order to use, like, your different weapons that have limited Listen. ammo. At dawn, this town is gonna be destroyed by a missile. They're gonna wipe out the town? We don't have much time. Let's move. And we're already jumping to the fucking to nuke the is going to Come hit on, Raccoon City... Before we've even met any of the other UBCS 
uh, soldiers before we face Nemesis. Any of this shit. And all because it's like we just decided, no, we want to have a level that goes through the, like, uh, the RPD, which would have made way more sense if this was an RE2 scenario. I don't think we'll make it through that. What now? Remember me, Kyle? He was best bro. <laughs> he had one of the best lines in the remake. Get off my train, shit bird. Oh, there he fucking is. Took you long enough. Yeah, that's lame sounding. We have to find some way to stop him. I don't think it matters how much lead we pump into him. Be careful. Yeah, yeah, his fucking voice his goddamn f voice is awful. More kick. We've got it now. You know, that's another thing that I'll, like, give props to, uh, to Remake 3. I think, I think his voice in that, you know, while not the exact same as it was in original RE3, is still, is still way better than, like, this period of time where it felt like just, like, his, like, his voice and, like, sounds he made in general just sounded off. Like, Remake 3 Nemesis is very good at, like, the sort of good monster roar for, uh, loud monster roar when he says stars. But yeah, it's like you said, it was like, it's a good guttural growl that he has in the original. Where it just comes off as, like, stars. Hey, what is that thing? I don't know. I guess the way I'd ultimately describe it is, like, the difference in Remake 3 is, like, it, it's a roar that, like, when you hear it, you can tell that, like, it has more bass to it. Jesus, not even a fucking shotgun shell or machine gun bullet is enough to, like, kill you with a critical. Sounds like it's coming from a nine-foot-tall meat brick bat that wants to invent your, invert your asshole into your mouth. That is true. He's definitely got that. God, Nemesis in the remake should have been, like, how Mr. X managed to be in, in Remake 2. I can't believe they thought it was okay to just make him into, like, a fucking set-piece enemy. Literally the reverse of what he was. And they made him more like how Mr. X originally was in, like, RE2 on PS1. Absolutely is. Yeah. I'd still play Remake 3... Over a few other notably bad Resident Evil games for sure. But, but, uh, but, like, there's no, there's no divorcing the wasted potential that game has from, like, the quality of the rest of the game. Even if, like, uh, even if, like, what it ultimately has left is, is something that you like. Okay, let's keep moving. Yeah, that camera angle was a bit weird for that. Like Carlos, you could have you could have moved a bit more to the left in that case.
Like, for real. Like, like this goddamn level of uh, especially is making me feel pretty damn loaded up as far as, uh, as far as other weapons right now. Kind of appreciative of that. But hey, at least we'll be just about done, like, after this level, I think, getting the, uh, like, the main, uh, Raccoon City incident scenario out of the way. I imagine there's... Yeah, because I want to say there's still, like, some extra sub-scenarios that unlock after this. One of which, I'm pretty sure, is the fourth survivor. Which, I am... Shut up! There's a room. Your voice sucks. Seriously, it feels so bizarre going through these parts of the RPD as Jill and Carlos when, like, you never had access to these parts of the of the police station when you played that game. UBC Nemesis sounds like he's incredibly constipated. Oh, no. I definitely can never... That, that is definitely a thought that I am never going to be able to be rid of now. Good job, Cell. Oh god, that was actually close. Like, that's actually another good thing I can say about, like, the... About, like, these pitch black sequences that require the flashlights. Like, when you see an enemy coming up to you very close that isn't in, like, the beam of your flashlight, you can still see the glow of their eyes. That's, like, enough of, like, a good, like, cue... That, like, when you see that, you're like, oh, fuck, there's a zombie! That pain scream as he tries to extract the snapping turtle from his pals! Oh, no! Ah! <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, seriously, I've, like, holy shit, like, th like, this scenario straight up is, like, so much better than, like, the past two main ones that we've gone through. Like, I feel the weapons I'm getting, especially after I got past that initial hurdle. I admire his determination. Like, uh, like, I... Like, I feel sufficiently powered without, like, breaking the game now. We can't this is, this him. does feel... Right. This feels like it's the best that the game has ever gotten up to this point. After all, butt-snapping turtles and tremendous poops are the most tactical like the mud dragons. Later. They indeed are. Oh, man. Man, ten critical hits. I feel like with the shots I was putting in Nemesis' dome, that clearly should have bumped it to, like, 50 or something. Alright. go. Is the door gonna open? Yes, it is. Okay. Goodbye. We need to get up to the roof fast. This is seriously how we're gonna escape Raccoon City. We're not even we're not even gonna be going to like the fucking clock tower, the hospital, the labs, any of that stuff. Nope. We're just gonna we're just gonna get a chopper to uh, to carry us out of Raccoon City on the roof of the police station. Because apparently all of this is happening on the same day and not October and, and not October 29th. No, no, September 29th and October 1st, like it is in the original, because it takes place over two uh, like those set of days. Jill's like incapacitated with the T virus throughout the 30th. Let's get to the roof. Right. Oh god, it's so weird going back to a version 
seeing like a version of of the RPD in this fidelity where it's like it's not the remakes layout where it actually has a, some more sensible architecture like stairs in the foyer what is the UBCS thinking I'm too far down on the chain they would die also, that's completely inaccurate to what it is because the ones that actually destroy Raccoon City are, uh, like, at the end of the day, is the U.S. government launching a fucking missile because this is the only way to sterilize. <laughs> like, I'm not a fucking Resi Lord nerd or anything, but that's a pretty blatant fucking thing to get wrong. <laughs> Yeah, but whatever. The, like, the, like this is a fucking spinoff that is already by its design meant to like take extreme liberties with like the plot developments and whatnot. This is literally. I mean, I mean this is straight up the game that decided yes, a Wesker did have it in his plans to get impaled by the tyrant. It looks that way. Again? Now what? He's got a rocket launcher. You can't be serious. <laughs> This guy's carrying trouble. We need to destroy that weapon. How can we take that thing out? Oh my god, that's a fuck ton of damage! So I guess I still just gotta keep shooting at your fucking rocket launcher. There we go. It looks like that did the trick. Even he couldn't survive that. Oh, but he does. Nemesis survives just about anything. Oh, look, okay, look at that. Look at what I was talking about. Like the one on the right that I uh, that I just killed right there. How the hell did it get not get knocked back from me shoving the other zombie away during the melee counter? Like th this is the shit I am talking about. Oh my god. You know I'm done. Fuck it. Who cares? I'll try not to bring it up anymore. Much in the same way I try to not think about Resident Evil 4 remake at any point. It is bad for my mental health. Okay. We'll note that Jill and Carlos don't know the source of the nuke yet. An umbrella gets it in the neck by the government and has all its assets frozen to reimburse the country for the economic damages. Sure. But obviously that, that doesn't change the fact that like we're dealing with like a heavily truncated version of the plot of RE3. Which is skipping over a lot of key fucking details. But I digress. Anyway. Here's a version of Nemesis that absolutely should have stayed in the remake, instead of turning into a fucking quadruped free. No Bitch way. can't even swim. How is that possible? I had the feeling it would be that. All right, you want me? Come and get me. You want stars? I'll give you stars. God, and I don't have any more grenades. That's right. Ooh. I mean, at least it's a good thing I got a first aid spray. I feel like with that, I have no chance of, like, 
dying that I need to restart the entire fight. Note that Nemesis, unlike other tyrants, is actually made tougher because he doesn't have an exposed hard tame. That is true. I mean, the boldest part on his chest is definitely close enough to that. Yeah, seriously, I- okay, I'm sorry, how the fuck is anyone ever expected to, like, properly deal with those when he does that move? And now, after all the positive things I had to say about just how it felt going through the game earlier, now that I, I basically got nothing left but my pistol, I am like, fucked. Ah, fuck you, fuck you! You're gonna flail around like an asshole? I could do that too! <laughs> the pistol is literally not good enough to, to get him to like stagger out of attacks. Absolute bullshit. There is no way to avoid damage. I, I swear I'm going to die because of this. Oh, fuck, okay. Knife time. God damn it, kill the fucking bastards. God. Fine, you know what? I guess this is what they want me to do, even though it's lame. I'll just use the pistol for everything, except for, like, when he's clearly gearing up for attack that needs to be knocked out. Yeah, like that. We can't shoot it with those tentacles in the way. It's using its tentacles. You know, fuck it. We'll do it this way, actually. What? No! 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 Piss off with that! Not even the fucking rocket launcher has a good enough splash damage range to, like, get rid of those tentacles. Because seriously, it is impossible to shoot them! Don't stand in the fire like that. What are you doing? Okay, this is, definitely is going a bit better this time. Just, oh my god. What the actual fuck? Is 
seriously? Like, how is anyone expected to avoid that? And he's doing it again! Oh, fuck you! Fuck you with that A and B bullshit! What a- yeah. You're in some good tilt? Yeah, you are. God damn, man. Whatever, I'm pretty positive I'll still be able to, like, beat this one. Like, I can hear the hit effects as well from when my knife is colliding. Jesus. And I do, like, have another green herb that I can pick up if I absolutely need it. But this is all I got left. You were starting to get on my good side uh, game, but you just had to fuck things up right with this boss fight. Seriously, what is it at this point that it's like basically every single end boss of a scenario in this game has been like so frustrating and inconsistent. There. At least it took only one... It took only one... Like, uh, like one game over. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, wait. I didn't mean to skip that. Oh, fuck. I just accidentally nudged the Z button, I think it was. Oh, well. Who cares? There it is. They're consistently bastardy. <laughs> yeah, that that's basically the only consistent thing they got. Uh, all those people. I mean, what were you gonna do about all those people that uh, that you're mourning for at this point? Like, give them a cure for their zombie virus? But They're already the dead. City vanished from the map. However, not everything disappeared with the town's annihilation. The nightmare would continue over the next few years as the survivors fought on. Oh boy. But that's it for... She's... Yeah, the ranks are just getting so sad at this point, but I don't care. Oh, wait, hold on. It didn't unlock, actually, did it? Unless it's later. Huh. You know what? I actually think that's going to be a stopping point then. Unle unless I'm forgetting something. Like, unless... Unless ranking actually is important for unlocking some of these, like, sub-scenarios. That or maybe for Survivor is like a late bonus thing that just gets the that that simply gets added to this section after I do like Umbrella's End or something. I'm not sure, but I don't know. Wesker's bit combined with going through Raccoon City that definitely I think is enough Umbrella Chronicles. Clean out the last of one and all of three. Have a drink and a consolation cookie. <laughs> I will. I mean, I only drink water, but it's a good enough drink. I can definitely get to uh, doing the other stuff I need to uh, for the rest of the day. I mean... Oh, god damn it! I, I had to catch myself, really, because I had to 
consider if I really did believe what I was about to say, which was, well, that was fun. Because it's like, I mean, some parts of it were. I felt I got to a pretty good groove in, like, some of those levels in the in the RE3 section where I was actually getting enough ammo uh, to work with. You know, I was getting my crit shots and everything. Like, I felt like I was getting by just utilizing full well all the things that, like, the game has to its systems and I wasn't having to deal with any sort of bullshit. And then... And then I just remember the bosses, especially Nemesis. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, these things are still tedious. Oh, well. I think at this point, like... Like, Umbrella's End, that uh, new scenario, combined with whatever unlocks after, I'll try and fit into one last stream. Might be this Friday, might save it for, mo uh, for next week on Monday, I'm not sure. But regardless, I know that I'm treating myself to something good after this. And that is, I am going to do a in-depth stream on Ghost Squad so I could show off everything that I've been spending the past week trying to uh, unlock and show why that game is fucking fantastic. The, the way that it is. It's a game that not only other light gun shooters should take notes of, but I do feel like there are some aspects about it that any arcade-style game should take notes from. Alright. Regar regardless of what I actually had for fun uh, with this game, do appreciate you all stopping by to watch this. There might be uh, there might be more of this later in the week, or we might just go straight to Year of the Mecha. Uh, when Saturday rolls around. Well, we'll see how it goes. But, you all take care. Have a good rest of the day. Later.